Gus, a Concerned Citizen, by Damos, on AO3, Chapter 10, again. Hitoshi had known something was wrong, but he was almost disappointed that it turned out to be this. Evidently, the people at the warehouse had realized he had found them, and had managed to make their escape in less than 12 hours. It had been since he found the place, and they've taken pretty much everything with them. All that remained were metal tanks and ski masks on the ground, the remnants of something being dragged out the same door he perched on last night. All told, it didn't turn out to be much of a raid at all. He watched the other heroes investigate the scene from his perch on one of the catwalks, shoulders tensed. He should have trusted his gut on how suspicious the whole place had been. Moving in too fast had cost them everything, including whatever victims had been here. Hitoshi had to force himself not to beat himself over this too badly. Had to tell himself that sometimes shit like this happened. It wasn't the first time he fucked up. And for once, there was at least some bright side. He was right that there hadn't been any security cameras or any real security of any kind. So even their escape was a sort of information. Someone had a surveillance quirk. Something that let them know he scooped. Something that he couldn't have accounted for. Shit happened. He knew that. It sucked. But he acted as best as he knew how to with the information he had. Acknowledging that didn't make the sour taste in his mouth disappear, though. He had seen someone who needed saving and let them get taken away. As if he wasn't personally invested in the case enough. The basement had been plain, concrete, and cheap, overhead lamps, three small rooms with secure doors, but everything else removed, if that setup hadn't been worrying enough. Tentacle had turned his apprehensis to nose and confirmed that at least ten people had been through that room in the last week, a far cry from the three Hitoshi had seen last night. There had been some residue of whatever had been in the tanks, at least. That had already been sampled and set over to labs to be identified. Hopefully, it would lead them to figure out what they've been trying to make in here. He rubbed at his eyes, not reacting as Tokoyami climbed the catwalk to join him. My agency got a hold of the traffic cams and had finished searching through them. There didn't appear to be any suspicious movement in the time frame you gave us. Hmm, figures. I bet they got into a boat. Harder for us to track. He took a moment to roll his shoulders. Do you think we should bring Midori out here? I feel like there's not much to see. From the corner of his eye, Hitoshi saw Tokoyami tilt his head to one side. I suppose it would, wouldn't would harm anything. But I must say, you put quite a lot of faith in someone so untested. The other hero's tone was more questioning than it was accusatory. Hitoshi worried his bottom lip between his teeth. He knew he had been obvious enough about Midoriya for Tokoyami to have guessed Midoriya's secret identity too, but it wasn't really his secret to tell. He's probably the reason your agency moved up a spot in ranking last month? Yeah. I do. Tokoyami only nodded. Honestly, that response may have been more obvious than anything else Hitoshi could have said. It wasn't as though he gave out his trust easily. He blinked as he felt a buzz in his pocket. He tried not to fumble with his phone as he pulled it out. The only reason it would ring while he was on duty was for emergencies. And speak of the devil. His heart rate spiked. He was in a goddamn highly rated hero agency. What could have happened? Midoriya, what's going on? Well, uh... Midoriya's voice on the other end was quiet and nervous, but not frantic. There's someone watching me. Explain. The situation was messing with Hitoshi's nerves. Midoriya should be surrounded by pros right now. This was sort of the point. Um, well, there was an emergency, I think. That there was a sort of explosion down a block, so everyone left to go help with that. But, but I think too many people left. No one else is here. And I noticed this person standing in the parking lot garage next door. They haven't 
moved. And I'm pretty sure they're watching me, but I didn't want to do something weird and make them realize I knew, so I called you. Hitoshi immediately jumped to his feet and started power walking out of the warehouse. Tokoyama didn't ask anything, but was hot on his heel. I I'm sorry, Midori continued, quieter. I'm so sorry. I I'm I'm sure you're working. I shouldn't have called. He wasn't even doing anything. No. Hitoshi cut him off. I trust your instincts. You're right to call. Can you try to get somewhere where there are other people? A reception counter? Or the dispatch officer? I... He could practically hear Midoriya overthinking things. But if they come for me, I don't want anyone else to get hurt. Right. Of course. Midoriya didn't have a single shred of self-preparation. He knew that. They're less likely to do something with witnesses around, and no one gets hurt, including you. The silence on the other end of the line was telling, but eventually Midoriya said, All right. They would not find out until much later that this particular situation had no quirks involved, just a suspicion that Mindjack had been showing up at a new agency in a big window. Izuku couldn't stop shaking. This was worse, somehow, than almost dying. That, at least, had been straightforward. This left too much room for his brain to run wild. What if someone else got hurt because of him? What if it was nothing? What if he was wasting everyone's time? He had gone to the reception desk, like Mind Jack had suggested, smiled at the man at the chair and explained that he wasn't supposed to be left alone. He sat in the chair, pushed up against the back wall, Phone still in his hand as Mind Jack stayed online. No doubt coming back for him again. Why did this keep happening to him? There was no way he'd actually cause the villain enough of a problem to go through all this effort. Was there? Now that it was clear he was working with heroes, any hit would have been expensive and incredibly well planned. And well, yeah. There had been some kind of explosion at a building down the road, one that was not obviously a bomb, but Izuku had seen enough to know how easily accidents could be manufactured. Close enough that bright streets had been the obvious choice to respond, but far enough away that no one registered it as a possible distraction. And there hadn't been a hero specifically assigned to protect him, so he had been left alone. In fact, he had been left alone for at least 15 minutes before he noticed a man watching him. There was a small green space between the agency and the parking garage, and the man was standing in the shadows. It was only Midoriya's insistence that he had to find something wrong that led him spotting the watcher. But he hadn't been attacked, and there were plenty of quirks, not to mention straight-up weapons, that could have taken him out clearly from that distance. And now he was... Somewhere that, like Jinso has said, was probably not going to be attacked when there was a constant stream of heroes and sidekicks going through the doors. So, assuming it wasn't just him overreacting, what had that even been about? As he tried to connect the dots, the trembling in his arms only grew worse. Um, mind Jack? The other end of the line had been filled with sounds of wind and muffled thumps. But the hero acknowledged him with a, hmm? Do you think there's a chance that this is a trap for you? It felt like a stretch. It was far more likely that this was just a way for whoever was behind things to gather information on the agency. Or on him. Or maybe on his connection to the pro he was on the phone with. In which case, the call had been a bad idea, as he kept telling himself it was. But the pit that had opened up in his chest, insisted otherwise. It's a possibility. Came the voice on the other end of the line. But I have Tokoyami with me, and I've alerted the others so they know what's going on. It'll be fine. Right. Is a good breath. Okay. You're somewhere safe, right? Y yes Then I'm gonna get off the line and coordinate some stuff. Let me know if anything changes. Okay? No, he didn't think it was okay, but he didn't know how to explain why. Yeah. Okay. 
What followed was the longest 45 minutes of Izuku's life. The receptionist kept casting him sympathetic glances as he bounced his leg up and down. Slowly, more heroes started to trickle into the building, then out of it. Whatever damage the explosion had caused had been mostly contained. The heroes, remaining on the scene, being the ones with the quirks best suited for cleanup. And that was good, right? If something had happened, Mindjack would have more backup. His thoughts were starting to reach the dangerous point of, maybe if I just took a look outside to check, when Xylophone came through the door, his costume with streaks of soot and dust, and his smile was obviously a little strained. He walked right up to where Izuku was hunched in a chair and bowed his head. Hey, uh, I heard the gist of what happened. I am so sorry about that. Usually we're better organized, which I know isn't an excuse, but I can promise this won't happen again. You're damn right it won't. The sound of Shinzo's voice had the tension draining from Izuku's shoulders. When he had peered from behind Cellophone, the sight of his face had them hunching back up into his ears. It was bloody. One eye squinted shut from the riblets of the blood that were coming down from somewhere above his hairline. As he walked up to the two of them, in with a slight limp, and one hand pressed to his side in a way that screamed, injured. Despite all that, the look on his face read more as irritated than in pain. Apparently, this shit is bad enough that you needed to be put in a place with actual security. Mind Jack shot a look at Xylophone, who looked suitably embarrassed at the whole situation. Save the gist basket for after the case is solved, and show me to the medical. Xylophone obliged, and Izuku stared after them for a moment, before jumping up and scurrying after them. Was this from, um, the person? He asked, awkwardly. He didn't really know how else to put it. Persons. Mind Jack shot him a wary look. And yes, you know, at a certain point, I'm just gonna have to start assuming every theory you have is true. Izuku felt the blood drain from his face. You mean... Shinso shrugged, the movement apparently building something that caused him to wince. There was an ambush, yes. And they knew about my quirk. Sukiyami's too, for that matter. Both Izuku and Silophone shot him a worried glance, and Mai and Jack rolled his eyes. He's fine, better off than me, anyways. Trying to see if he could catch up to any of the fuckers. Silophone grimaced. They got away. But that earned the spotlight hero, and light smack on an arm from the underground one. Hopefully not, you damn pessimist. The three of them slid through the doors of the on-site clinic. It was fairly busy, with psychics waiting around to have their cuts and scrapes from the earlier incident looked at. But when they caught sight of Mindjack, state, one of the medics shifted to them in a private room. With Xylophone and Izuku on either side of him, Mindjack was lifted more than he sat on the medical bear. It looked like... The annoyance had mostly been replaced with his usual back-tired look at this point, but when the medic pointed a pen at him and asked him what the damage was, the hero obliged by groaning, and then reaching to start peeling away his costume. Izuku didn't realize what was happening until the last layer came off and Shinso Itoshi was shirtless in front of him, and wow, yeah, he definitely had at least a bruised rib, but... Oh my god. I'm gonna go wait outside. His voice was squeaky and his face was no doubt hopelessly red. Of course he would be built, Izuku. He's a pro hero. They don't need to make it weird. He was pretty sure Xylophone laughed at him, but he didn't stick around to find out. Wandering out the door in a flush daze and sliding down the wall into his face rested in his hands. He had to wave off at least one worried sidekick and tell them, no, no, he wasn't hurt, just waiting for someone. For a few minutes, he was more embarrassed than anxious, but once he had settled, got it through his head that Mind Jack was all right, it started creeping back into his chest. Whoever that was, it must have used him to try and hurt Mind Jack, and succeeded. Was it too late to leave? To say that he didn't want to be protected? 
If it got other people hurt? If it got Shinso hurt? Logically, he knew the hero. Heroes? Was Tokuyami going to come out of this uninjured too? Wouldn't let him go at this point, because it would probably end up with him getting killed. But there was no way he was worth all that trouble, was he? From either side. And me? Shinso had said. And Tokoyami? And no, that's not just because of our jobs. If that was true, then why? He blinked black the tears threatening to spill down his face. The way he saw it, now there was really only one option. Make himself as little of a burden as possible. The problem was that it meant both don't get in trouble and do whatever they ask. And what had he been asked to do was help solve the case. And that was causing all these problems. He tasted iron in his mouth from how hard he had been biting on his cheek. So he forced himself to strain his back and take a deep breath. Mind Jack had got into him for it before, but what else was he supposed to do now but work until this was solved? The rap of knuckles on the top of his head startled Izuku out of the spiral of thoughts. He looked up to a considerably less shirtless Shinso. On the other hand, pressed a patch of gauze into his hair. Not to repeat your words back at you, but I'm fine. The hero offered him a tired smile that nodded as much of Izuku's inside as it unnodded. But I'm accelerating the couch-hopping timeline. Go get your stuff. There's a car waiting for us outside. Izuku blinked at him, mouth open. We're going to Shoto's. He has an actual security area at his agency. He supplied, sounding exasperated and not fond. Not fond. Izuku could not think like that right now. No, go before I decide it'll be better for you to never leave my sight. Izuku squawked and darted away before the flush on his face returned, missing the sigh and murmur of, I feel like it's the only way I can stop something bad from happening to you. And if on the car ride to Kyushu, Izuku assured the clearing flagging hero that it was fine if he slept, that he would wake him up if something happened, if he gave Shinso a small smile and echoed the man's own words about taking care of himself back to him, watching him drift off with closed arms and his head pressed up against the window, then that was between them and the man driving the car. In this chapter specifically, we see a lot of Izuku's insecurity in the sense of, I'm the problem, I can't be a burden, I need to minimize my existence, my burden, because I can't be more of a burden kind of thing. Which, again, trauma, trauma, it hurts my soul, but yeah, trauma. That sabotage though, oh my god, I remember reading it for the first time and I was petrified. I was scared. I was scared for Izuku. I'm gonna be honest with you, I was genuinely scared for Izuku. So I'm glad that Izuku's okay. I'm glad that Hitoshi's okay. And also, I, if it was me, I wouldn't have called. I would have probably gone to the reception desk and made sure somebody was with me, but I wouldn't have called. Why? Uh, because I tend to minimize stuff. I'm like Izuku, I minimize. I would have said, oh, it's just in my mind. I'm just being crazy, haha, <laughs> just crazy. Funny, funny, haha, <laughs> crazy, right? Um, and I would have minimized it. I would have been like, no, they're not staring at me. That's, that's crazy. That's, that's, no. So I would have probably, yeah, gone to a reception desk, stayed there and waited until the heroes came back and none of that would have happened. Or maybe I would have gotten killed. Yeah, no, I probably would have gotten killed way before Izuku. I can be quite dumb sometimes. And and by dumb, I mean I minimize. Like, I realize something, but then I minimize it. I'm like, oh, this, this, and this, and this. Nah, I'm just being delusional, and it ends up being true. That's what happens. I should trust my gut, but I don't. I should really trust my gut. You guys should trust your gut. Sometimes your gut speaks to you, and it speaks the truth. As always, my rain jobs, make sure to eat, sleep, drink water, take your meds. Have a wonderful day or night. Link to my Discord server and socials are down in the description. Subscribe to see more of my content and thank you so much for watching.